Hello and welcome to Telesur English. I am Estefania Bravo in Quito, Ecuador, and this is from the South. Venezuela has confirmed six new cases of the COVID-19 virus, raising the total to 42. The Minister of Communications gave an update on how the country is facing the outbreak. Until yesterday, we had 36 confirmed cases. As of today, we have identified six new cases, raising the total to 42 people infected by COVID-19. Four out of those six new cases come from the state of Miranda. Jorge Rodriguez also urged Venezuelans to continue to stay at home as part of the quarantine, which hopes to curb the outbreak. We tell the people that the only thing they have to do to help us is to stay at home. Just stay at home. That is the only thing that has shown any type of effect in the control against this pandemic. Humanitarian aid sent by the Chinese government has arrived in Venezuela as part of joint efforts to control the COVID-19 outbreak. A plane carrying medical supplies and diagnostic kits landed at the Maiquetía International Airport on Thursday. Venezuelan Pre Vice President Delcy Rodriguez received the shipment alongside the Chinese ambassador to Venezuela. They also announced this is, the o this is only the first shipment of supplies and that an air route will remain open between Beijing and Caracas to guarantee continued cooperation. China will also count with Venezuela, like we know we can count on China. I want to thank them again and announce that starting next week, we have decided to establish a permanent air route between China and Venezuela for the arrival of aid to combat COVID-19. China is not only helping Venezuela, but every country that needs it. That is cooperation. While we hear voices that bring fear and hate, that seek to politicize this situation, we are seeing China's leadership in helping the countries that need it the most. The Venezuelan government, working alongside community organizations, has intensified efforts to distribute food to help people during the ongoing quarantine. This is one of 33 packing centers of food that for four years has been distributed at a subsidized price across Venezuela. After the announcement of the quarantine, militants and social organizations came together to guarantee that millions of Venezuelans have food at home. We can guarantee the Venezuelan people that during this or any circumstance, and thanks to this well-organized system designed by President Nicolás Maduro, that we can deliver these boxes to them to their homes. Every state has activated the necessary systems to face the crisis. We must be aware of all the effort being made and uses properly. We can't waste food. We activated the whole national food system to bring food to the people, to be sure that every public and private food service is properly working behind closed doors and following all due process to keep the products clean from the virus and to deliver it food to the people. There are more than 35,000 local production and supply centers in the country, known as CLAP. They coordinate the delivery of food. Today they do it home by home due to the quarantine. We must protect the families in quarantine. We bring food to every home while wearing protective gear. In spite of the pandemic, we bring food to people's homes so they don't have to go out and buy things and maybe get infected from the people around them. The government has been working on support plans for a long time to fight the economic war being waged by imperialist forces. They also announced the implementation of aid programs during this emergency. The government has always shown concern for our people, our neighborhood, and even more during the current situation. They help us now that we can't leave our homes. A quarantine is the most drastic and effective measure to stop the spread of the virus, but it requires great discipline, organization and social commitment. 
On Wednesday night, millions across Brazil expressed their anger at the far-right president's handling of the coronavirus pandemic by banging pots and pans from their balconies. Citizens also chanted out with Bolsonaro, demanding the removal of Jair Bolsonaro from office. While similar protests have been taking place in working class neighborhoods recently, on Wednesday, upper middle class areas also joined in. In the neighborhood of Higienópolis in Sao Paulo, the image of Saint Councilwoman and human rights activist Mariel Franco was also displayed on a building, as investigations have found alleged links between the killers and people close to the Bolsonaro family. The Brazilian Health Ministry has so far confirmed over 600 cases of the novel coronavirus in the country. For more on this, let's hear from our correspondent in Sao Paulo, Brian Mir. Today marks nine days since, during a press conference, far-right Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro announced to the world that the coronavirus was a hoax, it was a media fantasy, in his words, and that Brazilians shouldn't worry about it. In those ensuing nine days, 13 members of the entourage which traveled with him to meet President Trump in the United States caught coronavirus. The mayor of Miami caught coronavirus and he says he got it from one of Bolsonaro's entourage. The president of the Brazilian Senate now has a confirmed case of coronavirus. The state governments together say in 600 confirmed cases, the federal government says 540 confirmed cases with 11,278 suspected cases. But many people feel that the numbers are much higher than this due to lack of adequate testing in most places in Brazil. The city that's been hurt the most by coronavirus up to now is Sao Paulo. Only on Tuesday did Sao Paulo Mayor Bruno Covas announce a state of emergence in the city, but the initial measures he took were very timid. He gave the school system one week to shut down. He announced that bars and restaurants had a week to shut down. He canceled public events but he left the public transportation system operating and immediately afterwards, local citizens in Sao Paulo started posting photos of horribly overcrowded buses and trains, talking about the risk for coronavirus, how the working class always has to pay the price, and audio messages have started circulating through the WhatsApp social media app of alleged health workers complaining that the government is lying about the gravity of the situation. There's a rumor going around Sao Paulo that the night before last, nine people died in one private hospital alone. Meanwhile, JP Morgan announced that they predict that the Brazilian economy will lose 10% of GDP in the second trimester of this year. We thank Brian Muir for that report. Let's take a short break now. Don't go away. The Pakistani journalist Tariq Ali examines the mass media influence promoted by imperialism. Get access to the analysis of the socio-economic and political life of the whole South America on our screen and platform in English. A critical place committed to the truth to determine the major events that transform the world today. Mondays, only on Telesur. Cuba has so far confirmed 11 cases of the novel coronavirus in the island. Our correspondent in Havana, Nayara Tardo, has the latest. Sí, efectivamente, en Cuba. As of Thursday, there are 11 positive cases of COVID-19 in Cuba, five foreigners and six Cubans, one of them an Italian man who was 61 years old who died this week. 
He had a background of bronchial asthma, which complicated his situation. And he was also one of the first confirmed cases in the country. In a press conference held by the health authorities today, they said that as of yesterday, there were 389 suspected cases under surveillance, with 356 people under permanent watch, and out of which 101 come from abroad and 255 are Cuban. Authorities also announced that they've reinforced patrol of the borders with special attention to flights which are coming from countries which are most affected by the disease. During a meeting with national ministers, President Miguel Diaz-Canel confirmed that every cultural and sporting event had been suspended, as well as every event which could gather large amounts of people. The president also said hygiene must be intensified in all workplaces, homes, and schools. He also talked about allowing people to work from home when the case may allow. Borders remain open, however, health authorities said that new measures will be announced in the coming days. Thank you, Nayara, for that report. On Wednesday, Cuba welcomed over 1,000 passengers and crew from the Brian Mar cruise ship to the island after other regional governments refused to give the ship permission to board. They have now safely returned to the United Kingdom thanks to the work of Cuban and British officials. Our correspondent in Havana, Fabiola Lopez, has the story. The lights from the Braimar cruise ship illuminated the night. Early on Wednesday, the British flagship was approaching the Mariel port, 50 kilometers outside of Havana. Since February, the passengers were trying to reach land. Five confirmed cases of the COVID-19 were cause for concern. No country wanted to welcome the 1,600 people aboard over fears of infection. The United States, Colombia, Curaçao, Barbados, and the Bahamas all denied the ship permission to dock, but the small Caribbean islands, to the shock of the world, accepted to end this odyssey. From half a mile away, the press documented this event. We were asked to perform a humanitarian operation safely and quickly. These operations were carried out safely by our personnel who have all received the appropriate training and have the necessary studies. While this took place in Mariel Port, in the streets of Havana, Cubans offered their opinions about this rescue effort. This is nothing new. Cuba has always offered their solidarity in every single aspect. This is to be expected of Cuba. In the afternoon, everything was ready for the passengers to be safely transferred to Havana's International Airport. The best thing Cuba has done is help other countries. We may not have as many things as the United States, but we help others. We don't hurt them. Our doctors are going all over the globe to offer help. Poor people in Cuba receive help. They are not forgotten. And this is all thanks to our great commander, Fidel. This is how the first passengers who left the cruise ship thanked Cuban officials. The island nation offered them a quick and safe evacuation back to their homes. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Alan Chesney, has tested negative for COVID-19 after feeling ill and going into self-isolation on Tuesday. Other suspected cases in his cabinet tested negative as well. The Department of Health also received the results of nine other patients that we have in isolation. All of the other results that we received to date are negative. The total number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 remain two. These two patients remain stable in isolation and are doing well. Meanwhile, the Bahamas has declared a state of emergency after confirming two more cases of the novel coronavirus. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said that the patients were identified through contact tracing of the first patient. And 13 Caribbean ambassadors to the Organization of American States have requested that the body's General Assembly be postponed due to the COVID-19 threat. Scheduled for March 20th, the meeting would see the elections of the next OES Secretary General and Assistant Secretary General for the next five years. 
During a televised speech, the president of Palestine, Mahmoud Abbas, called on Israel to release Palestinian prisoners amid fears of the novel coronavirus. Abbas also said Palestine is doing its best to counter the dangerous virus, as authorities have confirmed 47 cases of COVID-19. I demand Israel release them, and I hold the occupation authority fully responsible for their safety. I thank all the countries and institutions that have provided us with assistance. Despite our limited capabilities, we have managed so far to limit the threat of the virus to the smallest scale, thanks to the awareness of the people and their cooperation with the government and competent authorities. The head of the Malian government has announced that parliamentary elections will be held in the country despite the threat of the novel coronavirus. To date, Mali has recorded no cases of, of the virus, but the government has suspended flights from affected countries and closed schools in a bid to prevent the spread. We have decided to continue with parliamentary elections in our country, which we hope will be held whether or not we confirm cases of the coronavirus. We are holding the elections with precautions that we're going to take and arrangements that we're going to have in place. It is a question of supervision and training. Kenyan health workers are fumigating potential hotspots for the spread of the coronavirus around the capital, Nairobi. Health workers have started by identifying and mapping the hotspots and dispatching several teams to disinfect them. Uh, though the pandemic is in its early days in Africa, experts have warned facilities in the continent's richest nation could be overwhelmed by the spread. Australia's biggest airlines has announced they would halt all international flights and suspend 20,000 workers in response to the pandemic. Kansas Airlines made the announcement days after the island nation's other main career, Virgin Australia, grounded its entire international fleet. The measure will be in effect for at least two months as the government told citizens Wednesday to forego all overseas travel in a bid to halt the spread of the novel coronavirus. In South Africa, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 continues to climb. Last Sunday, the president announced urgent state of disaster measures to curb the pandemic. Our special contributor, Johan Abrahams, has more. Close to 2,000 passengers are still stuck on a luxury cruise ship, which is docked in Cape Town. The Ministry of Transport was unable to confirm whether the passengers would be allowed to disembark today. This came after six passengers came into contact with a cargo ship crew member who had showed symptoms of COVID-19. Yesterday they've been cleared after testing negative for the virus. The passengers are mostly Germans who will fly home as soon as they are cleared to disembark. Meanwhile, the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in South Africa has surged to 116. This is a staggering 54 new cases since the president, Cyril Ramaphosa, addressed the nation on Sunday evening when he declared several state of disaster measures to curb the spread of the virus locally. It's quite difficult to keep up with the new developments in the story with the number of infections that keep changing. But uh, the situation in Cape Town this morning is that not a lot of cars on the road, streets are virtually empty, uh, schools are closed, and restaurants are not quite as busy as they used to be. In fact, there's a ban on the sale of alcohol after six, which could really hurt the entertainment industry in the city. This is Long Street, Cape Town, the entertainment hub of the city of Cape Town. We spoke to some of the restaurant owners about the impact of the state of disaster measures on their businesses. It's dead, nothing. Nothing. I think we had about 30 customers last night. On a Wednesday, we would normally have two to 300 people. Last night was 30 people. It's having a big, a big impact on our staff, our managers and business. Our main business is done after six o'clock and people, and that's the way Long Street has always been. We're a party street. There is concern over the 14 cases of local transmission in people who have no known travel history, according to the latest official statistics. There are no reported deaths in South Africa attributed to the virus yet, but there are fears that this might soon change 
because of a high number of people living with HIV AIDS and TB. Most of the new cases are related to people who have traveled overseas, largely to Europe and the US. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that the government's travel ban on several European countries, as well as the US, China, South Korea and Iran, came into effect yesterday. Johan Abrams for Telesur in Cape Town, South Africa. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. The life is full of moments. Moments of fight. Moments of hope. Moments that present. Moments that you can live in. Telezur Documentaries. Sundays. Only on Telezur. Welcome back to From the South. In Ecuador, a alarming, an alarming incident took place on Wednesday at Guayaquil International Airport when a flight from Spain was forcibly denied permission to land by the city's right-wing mayor, Cintia Viteri, who ordered that a number of municipal vehicles block the runway. The Iberia flight, which had departed from Madrid with 11 crew members and no passengers, was meant to land in Guayaquil to take foreign nationals back to their respective countries amid this global pandemic. But the mayor made the decision under the false belief that the plane carried passengers infected with COVID-19. A KLM aircraft hailing from Madrid was also denied permission to land. Mayor Sinteviteri cited government emergency measures for her reckless decision as the province of Guayas has the highest number of COVID-19 cases in Ecuador. The Attorney General's office has announced it will start an investigation into the event. A spokesperson for China's foreign ministry condemned the treatment of Chinese media agencies by the U.S. government. This comes after a dispute with Washington when authorities decided that the number of employees would be caped at uh, some Chinese media entities uh, operating in the U.S. This led to China announcing countermeasures to similarly restrict U.S. journalists. Chinese media agencies have borne patiently for too long with the U.S. oppressive and discriminative moves in various ways, while receiving no kind of responses but further mounting pressure from the U.S. side. The All-China Journalists Association, on behalf of the Chinese media agencies, has exposed the U.S. on fair practices, unwarranted restrictions, double standards in the name of press freedom, and hegemonic bullying, and voiced firm opposition. We support Chinese media agencies to take a firm stand in defending their reputation and interests. China is forced to take reciprocal countermeasures on U.S. media agencies. After 82 years of uh, nationalization, the Mexican oil industry is struggling with a drop of international prices and the damages caused by the coronavirus pandemic. We have more in the following report. While celebrating the one-year anniversary of taking back the oil industry, Mexican President Andrés Manuel López Obrador pointed out its importance for the country's economy. The nation's dominance over our oil is an important issue. They didn't have time to hand over all of our wealth. Nonetheless, this administration has had to deal with a sharp drop in production by state-owned company Pemex, while also dealing with an energy reform that in 2013 opened up the oil sector to private and international interests. 
These administration identified contracts that were signed under a different context. As times have changed drastically, the contracts in turn became highly unfavorable to Pemex. The outlook for Pemex is not good. The oil debt is over $100 billion, and while production has stabilized to 1.7 million barrels a day, it's still half of its best days. On top of this, oil prices have dropped internationally. Prices have dropped sharply over the last year, and let's remember that 19% of the public budget comes from oil. The current COVID-19 pandemic is added to the economic downturn, which has restricted the activities and even movements of citizens. And with that, we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and other stories on our website at teleserenglish.net. And join us on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. For Telesur English, I am Estefania Bravo. Until next time. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable, yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. ¿Y tú? Get your body. Tuesdays, only on Telesur. From here to beyond the south. From here to the Caribbean or further north. Where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington. From Mexico. From Caracas, from Quito, from Havana. You can always see the news of from a new vision, connecting the global south. Only on Sur. Who's moving the chess man? What interests and motivate the actors behind each event? The board is deployed there. Critical Move investigates every event from Monday to Friday. Only on the Sur. pueblos que resisten en cada una de sus luchas. Somos esa ventana que se abre para visibilizarlos entre fronteras. Thursday, only on LS1. A review of the world news that investigates insights, analysis, and induces criticism, because every event has a context. Pusimos el punto de ahí. Dot in the eye. Saturdays. Only on Venezuela. Innovation, science, the technological breakthrough, and its influence in society. Viajeros del Saber, el futuro está aquí. Atomy. Monday, only on the Sur. Una travesía para descubrirnos. Buscamos conexiones perdidas. No nos queda otra que luchar porque no tenemos nada que perder. Realmente es por todos. Recorremos el mundo con Reportajes Telesur.
Hello, you're watching Telesur English. I am Stefania Bravo. These are the headlines at this hour. Venezuela has confirmed six new cases of COVID-19, raising the total to 42. The Ministry of Communications gave an update on how the country is facing the outbreak. Nosotros teníamos hasta el día de ayer en Until yesterday, we had 36 confirmed cases. As of today, we have identified six new cases, raising the total to 42 people infected by COVID-19. Four out of those six new cases come from the state of Miranda. Humanitarian aid sent by the Chinese government has arrived in Venezuela as part of joint efforts to control the COVID-19 outbreak. A plane carrying medical supplies and diagnostic kits landed at the Maiquetia International Airport on Thursday. Venezuelan President Delcy Rodriguez received the shipment along.